Baker's Rebellion and Gun Control. This presentation is going to go over what would happen if gun control laws were either more restrictive or more lax during the period of Baker's Rebellion in 1654. Gun control is an issue that today is a hot topic, but it's amazing to know that it was still a hot topic even back over um, 350 years, 350 years ago or so. So this is going to be a very interesting talk, and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Nathaniel Bacon and Sir William Berkeley. Um, these two gentlemen uh, were at the center of Bacon's Rebellion. Uh, Berkeley on the right was a well-respected Virginia governor. Uh, he had been in the position for many decades, appointed by the king. Um, he kept uh, uh, stability in Virginia. He negotiated with the Indians. He had a very steady hand. He had a reputation for being uh, very steady and very fair. Uh, Daniel Bacon was uh, Berkeley's um, uh, I believe it was his niece or nephew by um, by marriage to his wife. Uh, he was a little bit of a troubled child. Got in trouble in England, caused a lot of issues. Uh, his father got sick of him, said, "Help send you to Virginia and see if you shape up." And uh, in Virginia, he was greeted by Berkeley with respect, given a position on the on the uh, ruling council, um, and he kind of. Fucked it all up. He's a very arrogant little asshole. And uh, these two people, these two guys just did not get along. They butted heads on more than one occasion. This is the central theme of Vegas Rebellion. So, a little background history. Um, of course, the Indians were native to uh, Virginia. Uh, back when it was first discovered, obviously. The British came in to. Uh, Jamestown, found Jamestown. The Indians, of course, got moved back as a result of war and conflict and disease. And, uh, you know, despite that, the Indians and the British um, did engage in ample amounts of trade with each other for furs and goods. And the Indians also dealt with the uh, Dutch over in New Amsterdam, as well as the French. From New France, it was further away, but um, there were French influence, French outposts, all the way into the Ohio Valley. Uh, so uh, the Indians also had dealings with the French. Um, what did they trade for mainly? The Indians wanted two things: guns and gunpowder. Let's take the issue of stricter gun control laws. Let's look at the way the system was set up initially. Um, Guns and the, the UK colonies at the time were pretty restrictive in terms of who they could be sold to. Um, all guns had to be imported, obviously. Um, most guns ended up staying in the colonies. Um, and then a certain allocation was also meant to be sold to the Indians for trade. Um, of course, the thing is, some, some uh, uh, entrepreneurs also saw that the Indians were willing to pay for these weapons and so they also tried to smuggle weapons to the Indians to give them more uh, options you should say <laughs> or uh, try to sate the Indians demand for guns um, let's ask a question let's ask the question of what would happen if gun control laws at the time were more restrictive um, oh, of course the pilgrim here because they got most of the guns yeah, but the English of course went to the um, colonists at the time but what would more gun uh, control laws have done uh, to this um, uh, uh, to this trade? Well, let's just consider that the British weren't alone in this endeavor. They were also dealing with the French and the Dutch. They were all kind of uh, uh, big trading parts with the Indians. The biggest, of course, was the French. Now, let's think about this for a second. If the British were going to restrict the weapon sales to the Indians, wouldn't it make sense for the French to try to fill in that void? That's essentially what happened. What would happen if this was the case? The Indians were not stupid by any stretch of the imagination. They knew the value of guns and they also knew how to get a good deal. Um, case in point in New York State, um, 
uh, on the British side of the uh, colonial New York, uh, you could get a gun for two, two beaver pelts, while in uh, New France it cost you uh, six beaver pelts. Um, that is just just right across the river from each other. The Indians, of course, went to the British because it was cheaper. So I mean, the Indians knew how to barter war ties against each other. Um, one thing to consider is that the only way to, way to really regulate guns back then was through taxation. You could tax the weapons. Uh, how does this affect uh, Nathan and Nathan's rebellion? Well, you have to consider um, most of the people in uh, rural Virginia that Nathan had the most support uh, among people was with the poor farmers. They all had their weapons and guns available to them. Now let's consider that if taxes were raised, and now those farmers are all of a sudden going to have fewer guns. They just, just can't afford them. Well, if that's the case, how is that going to affect their wars or supposed war with the Indians? Well, now if because of the gun change, change gun, gun control laws, the Indians, Indians are not going to be getting a lot of weapons from the French. So now you have a bunch of well armed um, Indians uh, fighting against a ragtag group of British farmers with very few weapons in between. What happens when they fight? Well, more of the farmers are probably going to be killed, and Bacon could be killed too. Who are the winners in this conflict? The Indians. Who are the real winners of this conflict? French. Um, in this scenario, there is a good possibility that the French could instigate and form a pro kind of a proxy war with England. And if that's the case, you could see the French and Indian War being sparked off nearly a hundred years before Britain was ready to handle it. That's huge, because that means that we could be speaking French instead of English. Keep that in mind. Now let's take with the prospect of more lax gun control laws. So naturally, if you have more lax gun control laws, you don't have to worry about the French. They're gone. You're getting your guns from the British. They're the best option. Um, but how are gun sales going to be different? Well, let's look at how it is now. Um, you would have some guns be sent to the Indians, being sold to them, some guns going to the colonists, and some guns being kept with the British elite and the British regulars in the army. Um, that's how it is, uh, how it was supposed to be at the time. This is what the, what the laws were set up and specified for. Um, best for a moment, consider more lax gun control laws. Let's say there's no restriction on how many guns you sell to Indians, you should sell to the highest bidder. Well, who could buy guns at the highest price? It wasn't going to be the poor farmers out in, out in, in where Nathaniel Bacon had a lot of support. It would be from the Indians who had beaver pelts and, and deer pelts to trade with for money. And the British were more than willing to make that trade. If it meant they can gain a little coin. Why couldn't the colonists get in on this deal? They were poor. They couldn't afford those brand new uh, guns to come out. Uh, the Indians would buy them all. So again, what are you Yeah, Bacon. We have even fewer uh, supporters because a lot of their guns were now in the hands of Indians who are buying them by the bucket load. They have a well armed Indian group, a few two ragtag rebels. What happens? They fight. Some die. Bacon may live, may die. Who knows? Indians win again, but the difference is now that the British are the ones who will benefit. Kind of, sort of. You have to understand that um, uh, Britain uh, control over the Indians was limited. Um, so you keep that in mind that their control was limited in terms of how much influence they could wield. Uh, in this scenario, of course, they had a lot more influence because they were the trading partner for guns and everything. But do bear that in mind at all times. So what does this mean with in terms of against William Berkeley? Um, the only thing to think of would be that. Uh, Berkeley was driven out very quickly by Bacon and his men, um, pretty much at gunpoint. If that happened again, either with fewer guns or uh, fewer gun control laws or 
more gun control laws, the result will probably be this will be the same. Because uh, you can have a gun point towards you, you do exactly what the person in front of you is telling you to do. So in this scenario, um, they will still bump heads. There will still be conflict. Um, but in both instances, the real loser is not going to be uh, Bacon or Berkeley. It will be the colonists, the poor colonists who will be stuck in between. There's this conflict between Bacon, uh, Berkeley, and um, the Native Indian tribes. Hope you enjoyed this video presentation. Have a nice day.